Tillman Community College up in Washington. I would uh, teach part-time in the English department and work as an instructional designer. And that's kind of where, uh, where my career has gone. Right now, I'm working at the uh, Washington State Board for Community and Technical Colleges as an uh, education technology specialist. Uh, and I still work as a uh, consultant. Um, but uh, let's, uh, this, um, it, was, it was really great to hear people talking about engagement in all of these, uh, in, the, uh, in the previews uh, this morning, uh, because uh, the, I read this uh, article, Engagement Matters, by Martin Bull Bullinger. And uh, it's a very important um, article, I think, because he really kind of brings together a lot of the research in uh, uh, how the, the correlation between uh, student engagement and student success and retention. And so I've been, um, uh, from the, that thinking, um, I've been uh, working on developing workshops on, on similar topics. Uh, to what we're doing today. Um, so annotation, you probably have used some form of annotation in your own work or, or with your students. Uh, one of the uh, reasons why we use um, annotation is because it teaches uh, good studying habits, right? It teaches somebody to engage with the text. Uh, when we ask uh, students to uh, summarize uh, or to highlight uh, find definitions of words, uh, then we're, um, uh, we're asking them to you know, engage in a text on a, on a very different level from just cursory reading. Uh, it's also, so that's that form of uh, interactivity. Um, then we have this problem, we have you know, a couple of problems. One of them was uh, that uh, as textbooks become more expensive, students are not going to write in their texts because they have to sell them back. That's a very strange uh, development in, uh, in uh, education history. Um, and then we have e-texts, which uh, we'll see it was it's kind of, there was, there's always been some forms of uh, annotation uh, available, um, but I don't think it's been very uh, fluid or um, uh, transportable, right? Uh, so, um, so we want to look at tools that will allow us to uh, solve those problems. Um, for instance, you know, in the uh, uh, in the Torah um, annotation, uh, it was just, you know, is 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 the book, right? So you have um, that uh, you have the text, and then we have the commentaries, and people. Um, you know, spend their lives commenting on the commentaries, right? Uh, and recently, um, there was uh, two book dealers found uh, a dictionary uh, from the 1600s, and it was uh, there was uh, something about the handwriting that they recognized, and they compared and they believe that it's Shakespeare's dictionary, and uh, it's. Um, it's amazing how much it, you can learn about an author on how they're annotating a text. And uh, it's, uh, it's, there's a, a book called, called Shakespeare's Beehive, and uh, it's still controversial, right? Because uh, there's um, scholars don't want to risk their reputation on saying yes to this for a couple of reasons. One of them, it could be wrong. Uh, but the second one is that there's such um, horrific amounts of money involved in this that uh, there's definitely going to be lawsuits involved somewhere. Um, and then uh, another thing that happened just, uh, just again this year uh, is that there was this, a researcher who had worked for three years uh, with a first folio. And, uh, and she's at a University of New York and um, she worked on this and was publishing things about the annotations because people have taken an interest in um, how people were reading. 
And so she was looking at it, not just studying uh, the first folio, which was part of the project, but also how do people read it. Well, um, so she was publishing this work, and then uh, another scholar uh, recognized the handwriting of John Milton, right, the author of Paradise Lost. Now, if you ever run into this, this is very funny, because uh, John Milton is a poetic genius, and uh, what he does in his annotations is very funny because uh, he'll take, um, he'll correct printer errors. Like I have this one here. This, this wasn't supposed to be bestilled, be, be it's supposed to be distilled. And uh, so he fixes that. But then also what he does is he actually corrects the, uh, the iambic pentameter, the scan of the lines for Shakespeare. And then he'll rewrite passages that will have a better rhyme scheme, what he thinks is a better rhyme scheme, uh, and uh, uh, works with the meter better. Um, and so, uh, then, uh, the other, other thing that's interesting about when I was talking about textbooks is um, when, as an English major, if you probably could guess I'm an English, I was an English major, but uh, I, uh, even though it was the early 90s, I still didn't want to pay for textbooks, right? It was just, you know, counting every penny. And uh, my dad was an English teacher, and he kept a lot of his books. And so uh, he said, why don't you take my copy of Chaucer? And I'm thinking, ah, that, I'm, this is a pretty beaten up old book. Uh, but then I thought, I'm not going to pay for this. You know, how often am I, I going to read this? And... Uh, uh, the um, and it was also all marked up, and I thought that that was a bad thing. Except what I found was when I was sitting in the classroom, uh, the uh, uh, the teacher would say, "Now this passage refers back to uh, a very obscure myth. Does anybody have any idea what that might be?" And I'd look at the annotations, and my father, by the way, much better student than I ever was, <laughs> um, had. Uh, definitions of words, where things came from. Um, and then I also noticed that, uh, that the annotations in that copy of Chaucer was, were, was by two hands. And some of it was in pen and some of it was mostly in pencil. And uh, I think it was my dad was the pencil writer. Um, but when I realized that, okay, so now we have three layers of annotation in a single text, and so the next person that gets this, I, I don't remember who I passed it on to, but whoever is going to get this, it's turning into a real treasure trove. Uh, and so, so we do this. We, we, we annotate. And there's, uh, there's, you know, as instructors, I know you probably know that there's um, right ways of annotating and um, annotations that don't, you know, like uh, highlighting topic sentences is, is a great start, but you can certainly go deeper into a text than that. Um, I wanted to uh, start talking a little bit about the technology and um, how all of this is kind of tying up in my world. This is uh, Douglas Engelbart. Does anybody know who Douglas Engelbart? Okay, so we have got a few people who know. Um, he's commonly known as the inventor of the uh, mouse. That was one of his um, big claims, but he was certainly a lot more than that. Um, what he did was uh, uh, he believed that what the Internet was going to be uh, was a, a series of shared documents. It was going to be, and these documents, by the way, were going to live on a, a large computer that would sit under your desk. Uh, and everybody would have copies of all of those documents together and that the network would, would update, update that. Now, of course, our networking is, is a little bit different. Um, but what he did was, in 1968, he did a demonstration at the Stanford Research Institute and uh, what the demonstration did was um, he had a, um, he broadcasted this through television. He had um, his, 
computer screen on one side, so that was his computer screen, and then you could see him and hear him um, as he manipulated the text. And he saw this as, as this was going to be something that would be very common. Um, and I don't know if he got the timeline that he, that he wanted. Uh, but there's a um, video out that you can see called the uh, Mother of All Demos. Let's see. Here's... It's always a dicey proposition, isn't it? Seeing if your um, network will pick that up. This in your office, you as an intellectual worker, were supplied with a computer display backed up by a computer that was a okay. Click on a button light. So, we set up now with audio coupling and we're both looking at the same display and that'd be very handy to work. We can talk to each other and point. And maybe later I can hand you the chalk on this blackboard, like saying, here, you control it. But let's stay this mode now and add another feature that hardware-wise is available to the kind of display we have. I'd like to see you while I'm working on it. And we're going to go for a picture down in our laboratory in Menlo Park and pipe it up. Come in, Menlo Park. Hi, Bill. That's great. Now we're connected. Audio, you can see my work, you can point at it, and I can see your face, and we can talk. So let's do some collaborating. And a forthcoming involvement is this ARPA computer network, the experimental network that's going to come into being in its first form in about a year and end up sometime later with some 20 experimental computers in a network, which will be enough so that I could be running a system in Cambridge over the network and getting the same kind of response on a CRT. And it may be that people there, yeah, the next time we have a conference in Boston, I'll try this from there. And in that network, we're going to try to develop a special service to provide network information, relevant network information. I just wanted to show a few, um, a few minutes of that uh, because it was the um, uh, anniversary of that event. Last um, last year, and one of the uh, one of the uh, things that happened was um, one of uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite instructors at um, is that University of Virginia right now I think uh, Gardner Campbell uh, put together a project to celebrate this event that um, uh, really kind of was. Uh, uh, sort of this prophetic moment um, in computing uh, by putting together this project called Annotating Engelbart. And what we did was uh, uh, we had a we had uh, one of his essays um, was uh, Augmenting Human intellect and conceptual framework. And this was from 1962. In 1962, he described a lot of the things that he was developing uh, that went into the demo of 1968. And uh, then what we did was, uh, uh, as groups, is uh, you'll see that um, here's the document. And on the side, we have some tools. And one of them was... Uh, it was hypothesis, and it doesn't like this old laptop for some reason, but it seems to be working well enough. Uh, and what we did was we annotated it all together. And uh, you see that there was um, 251 total annotations, and then we had some online meetings where we would discuss um, the, the annotations. And he passed away some time ago, but his wife... Uh, runs the uh, the Engelbart Institute, and uh, so she was thrilled that this is um, where where things went. Now, um, what you're looking at is you're looking at the uh, this is a hypothesis, um, and I'll bring you to the website a little later. But hypothesis uh, is um, this annotation tool, and it's a plugin for Chrome. Uh, but it will work in any browser 
uh, where, or if you're not using the plugin, you can go to their website, put in any um, URL, and uh, punch it in, and it'll bring up the uh, a frame around it that will allow for annotation. And then you can also create groups in there. You'll notice that this says public, but if you had a class, you could create a closed group. Um, and there's also a, uh, you can see, there's the groups that I'm involved in. Um, let's go back here. Then. Okay. We'll take a closer look at hypothesis um, because you're thinking, uh, wait a minute, we already have annotation tools. We have um, in um, Microsoft Word, uh, you can insert comments, and in Google Docs has a comments feature that's, um, that's useful as well. Uh, and certainly, I use those in my professional life, and I've used those in, in my work. I'm sure that you may have used them in, even in grading. Um, but let's get some of those. Um, let's get some of those examples. Why is not? This is not a live. Nope. Okay. So. Um, See, I had this must be a different version. I don't have a link to the Google Doc, but let's we can uh, talk about this now. Um, what I'd like to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. Yeah. Uh, it's a trapezoid. <laughs> <Yeah, I know. laughs> um, so I think this this group is uh, fortunately for us is small enough to where. Um, we can get to know each other a little bit. Um, so you have some idea about um, what I'm, uh, what my work is, and, and what I've been looking at. I'd like to hear from you about any. Um, does anybody here? Uh, how many of us are teachers? Okay, and then, um, and then if you're not a teacher, there's do. You, um, do you use annotations at all in uh, in your work? Yes. I'm an instructional designer and also have technical communication background. So yeah. Okay, good. good. Right. Okay. And uh, maybe we can uh, just, uh, this is, uh, I love this, that we're at a technology conference. And whenever you go to these, like an education technology conference, they arrange the room in the worst possible way, which is, you're sitting there like little circuit boards behind each other. You know? and, uh, but um, let's go around the room and find out who's here. Um, you want to start right here, and if you want to, if you have any kind of um, annotation or annota assignment or annotation tool that you use, um, or if you if you don't say I'm just here to learn, that's um, that's fantastic too. Um, I'm Zach Olson from Big Bend Community College. I teach. Uh, developmental English, uh, and I'm interested in this session because the way our classes are set up right now, the students are collaborating on kind of a big research project as part of their writing, and so we have a, a course topic, and they're building a course, a class annotated through the audience, so they're you know, finding individual resources and uploading it, but that's our, our one tool, is basically a wiki page, so I'm looking for ways to annotate the text, because they're also finding all these different sources and sharing them within our course canvas and in the course library together. So if they could you know, start marking things up on in the course, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Hello. I'm Jeff Mugato from the University of Oregon. I'm the Language Center Director there. And um, in terms of annotation, um, I've never really gone beyond Google Docs, so the Microsoft Word Online. Um, but increasingly, literature professors are interested in tools like Hypothesis. Um, Ecomma is another one that we have in languages. Um, and you know, it's a great way to do close reading in, in a flip way um, so that actually close reading can happen in class. Great, great, great. Uh, I'm Chris Shetler from Central Washington University. I'm an English professor. I teach literature. Um, mostly using annotation for 
um, marking up papers, but also students use it for peer review of papers. Um, but I haven't, I mean, I've heard about hypothesis, um, but I'd like to learn more about it in terms of that close reading of literary text, yeah. I'm Molly Mooney, I'm a librarian and very occasional English adjunct at Columbia Basin College in the Tri-Cities, and um, I have not adjunct taught English in about three years, and I'm doing it again, and technology, um, amazingly, has progressed a lot in the last three years, and I'm really interested in using something like this in my classes. Yeah. I'm Jackie King. I am faculty English and Humanities at Pierce College in Puyallup, North Washington. And right now, I'm having the students do a collaborative exercise using the um, collaboration tool in Canvas. So I'm actually having to do it in Canvas, and so it's clunky. It is clunky, and so I'm looking for some ways to make it more streamlined and easier for the students to, to use. Like for instance, they're accidentally reading each other's work, and I have to figure out a better tool because that's not working really well. And also, I'm looking for um, a discussion if anybody has a, a rubrics on how to assess annotations. If the annotation is an assignment or part of their assignment, um, how do we how do we effectively assess that? I am uh, Robin Ashford, a uh, librarian and an online adjunct professor. And so, um, our institution is a Google Suite institution, so kind of live in Google Docs. Uh, it's um, Google Drive is kind of where everything is happening. Um, we use Google Docs extensively for um, all sorts of work sharing, but also I've used it with my students. Um, I first learned about um, Hypothesis a few years ago. Open Pedagogy Group was, um, I'm trying to think of his name, the professor's name, but he's teaching Shakespeare and using Hypothesis and had people from all over the world. And I would go in and look. It was public. It was huge. I would go in and look at those annotations, and I was trying to think of, this is pretty cool, how this could be used in an online course. I'm really looking at something to use to further engage the students in the text that they're reading in the course and to get them to help facilitate a better presence amongst each other. You know, because it's if it's a fully online course that you're teaching, they have especially if they're in a certain program all together, they're getting to know each other slowly throughout the program. But if they could in each course begin to make stronger connections, I'm kind of looking at a tool like that as something that might help facilitate that. Yeah. Uh, my name is Miriam Kruzner. I'm also at CBC, Columbia Basin College. I teach American government mostly. Um, I found out about Hypothesis on Twitter and really late in the summer and contacted them because uh, I didn't want to have to have my students have to go onto Hypothesis online for the free tool. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that you, it integrates with Canvas. So you could use Hypothesis and grade Hypothesis projects in Canvas. Um, so two of us are testing it out this quarter. And we will be running, uh, heading up a pilot program and since I'm still just trying to suss out what it can do, what it can't do, right. I figured this was a great way to come and hear what other people had, what, how other people addressed it. I've used it for uh, primary sources, so Declaration of Independence, the Articles of Confederation, and I would put up, um, because I do use uh, open source stuff, I don't have a textbook. I, try, I either send them to web pages, which they can use hypothesis on, or a PDF, all sorts of things, and then they just do it on the Canvas site. My name is David Etchell. I'm an instructional designer at Cornell Community College. About two hours south of here, if you cross the California border, you've gone too far. Um, I have technical editing background, as I mentioned, so I've used a number of different annotation tools. But I'm usually the person that people come to and go, I'd like to grade in a different way. I would like to annotate student work in a different way. How can I do that? So I have to answer those questions. And so I'm looking at different alternatives and better alternatives. So I, I get questions, everything from voice grading, recording their, you know, as they're reading the text to every other variation. So I'm here to learn. Hi. I'm Karen Buck from University. 
Morgan. Um, I'm the Office of Operations Manager for our online education team. I'm here just generally to learn in order to better support. Yeah. I'm Sissy Anderson. I'm also from the University of Oregon online education, uh, doing instructional design. And so I'm here to learn as well. Similarly, we have a variety of uh, faculty who we work with, so just interested in knowing different ways that we can help them and support them in terms of whether they're entertaining or other things that are just about this. So, yeah. And Nathan Zachary will be charging in the literature at Portland Community College, and then I, um, for well, the folks from that background are saying, I also have used Google Docs um, for indication of short passages, but I would like to use something that's more interactive. Um, I have a teach creative writing, and I'd like to do a final assignment where students are annotating it piece after reading and sort of like writing it with so much that they've got. Some, so some students could be looking at, at one craft issue, and another student could be looking at another craft issue and bring them out to a story. And I happened to stumble across um, a genius site. You guys know genius? Yeah, for annotating rap lyrics and hip hop. And, so I found a writing instructor who posted a short story using that platform and had her students annotated. And the annotations are have images in them and they're links to other sites and they're not just text-based annotation. So I would really like to know, I haven't used Hypothesis before, but I'm curious about whether that has that kind of um, multimedia functionality or you know, what folks are looking at. Yeah, there's uh, a... <coughs> uh, one thing, one thing I picked up on going to conferences is there's a lot of innovation coming out of libraries. You know, they're always at the forefront of things like open textbooks um, and tools and reimagining the uh, library space, right? Um, and so, and also, I've got some tools that I'm going to take a look at myself, like Genius. I, could, I haven't seen that yet. Um, and um, then. Uh, uh, and then we've run into a couple of couple of issues about uh, in just in this discussion about uh, how portable are these, you know, and how do you assess them? Um, the um, I you know so we we talked about some of these uh, um, current tools that we get. I'll be able to add to my list, so that's great. But uh, I've used. Uh, MS Word um, and Google Docs, um, and then I have uh, these are uh, live links in this, so um, you'll be able, you can go take a look at some of these. Uh, I was um, I just used uh, Hypothesis um, be just just by accident, you know, it was a, a part of a project I was interested in, and we were using Hypothesis. And it was, it's also free. And so um, my you know, background in community college teaching uh, in English, but also in adult basic <coughs> education, uh, my students were uh, very impacted by um, costs of any kind. And, and then uh, also uh, um, you know, what uh, department budgets are like. Um, and uh, uh, then there's also the the um, how how we change what we do uh, isn't always it, uh, progresses at the same rate uh, that your institution is able to support, right? So there's there's that issue. Uh, I like the uh, browser plugin um, because when I log into a computer, then my tools are there and. Uh, so it doesn't have to. It doesn't. Uh, it can be pretty much any computer. Uh, so that's very useful. Um, I was. Uh, I used. Uh, I skipped Cami because of cost. The cost just was the first time I looked at it. It was like I said, "Wow, that's expensive." I looked at it um, a month ago, and I said, "Oh my God, this is really expensive now." I used um, Digo for quite a quite, quite a while. Uh, Digo. Um, it, what it does really well is uh, social bookmarking. So we can uh, bookmark, um, we can bookmark uh, a website, and that gets shared out to a class. 
It also has annotation tools, but the um, annotating is uh, feels very um, uh, bolted on and precarious. Um, let's see then. Uh, so um, then hypothesis. I'll just take a quick, uh, a closer look at it. Um, Okay, so uh, the hypothesis website, just let me get us over there. Okay, so again, I'm, I would like to stress that um, I'm not a tools person. Uh, I'm very ecumenical when it comes to my tools. Uh, it's, um, if I find a better tool next week, I'll jump right, right to it. Um, I, I, what I liked about this was, um, um, was how uh, focused on education it was. Um, so if, um, when they talk about um, education, um, they have a lot of great annotation resources here for teachers. Um, and how to use the tool in, for specific kinds of assignments, uh, and things like that. I think that Jackie is onto something with the whole uh, assessment of there's some materials out there that should be included in a presentation like this because that's uh, how, how we assess annotations is, uh, um, uh, is important. Um, so you, you can set up an account and um, uh, and then they also have the Canvas um, module, which is has a cost to it, but they also have you can use it for free from their from their website or from uh, uh, from Chrome. Um, so yeah, they have that LMS LMS app. Um, and uh, notice too that uh, they talk about how to use this in journalism, publishing, uh, research. Uh, and that that sort of thing. Uh, so when I am uh, when I'm logged in, I see a pretty cryptic space here. Uh, this is all of the annotations that I've done, right? Uh, with this, and I have. Oops, let's see, what did I what did I just do? I think I expanded it. Maybe that's a good thing. Oh, okay, good. Oh, okay, good. good. Uh, so, like, for instance, we were just at the um, Augmenting Human Intellect, and um, I can see there's the URL, uh, the annotator, and then uh, visit the annotations in context. Uh, then there's the top tags uh, that I've used. Um, let's see, what's seven, seven times educator? So that's, yeah, that's, uh, and then... Um, one of the things I thought was very funny, and um, hypothesis, one of the folks who works there, um, Nate Angel, and I have been involved, ever since I've been involved in education technology, he's been somewhere around, he worked for Canvas for years, and uh, he worked for Lumen Learning, he's worked with... Um, number of companies that I've, I've worked with, and he's, uh, he's um, at Hypothesis, and they did the I Annotate uh, conference. And um, I participated a little bit remotely, and then somebody said, hey, I have an idea. Um, why don't, if, since this is Hypothesis, and this is a, uh, let's see, where are we? Let's see if I can get it to open, there we go. Um, Okay, and we let's see if we went. If this opens up, uh, there we go. Okay, so um, this oh, so we we first commented on this, and uh, we said, hey, this is an annotation conference. Let's go ahead and start annotating on this document. And I could just uh, feel the pan come out come out of the keyboard <laughs> or this computer screen. And um, then, uh, so people started to comment on the Google Doc, and what 
um, Nate didn't want to see happen was, okay, now we lose control of this document. What if somebody changes things? Where do the annotations go? Um, what, you know, what are we prepared? How are we prepared to support that? And they finally put up a, uh, uh, they put up a, um, a program on the site. Let's see, there we go. Okay. And that was, yeah, well, they had a, a um, let's see, this doc website, main selection. They finally put up a um, editable, um, one, an annotatable uh, version of the document um, on it. But um, so there was that. Let's see here. <clears throat> Public, um, there was that. Okay, I'll get back to um, date. That, um, okay. So, uh, what for some reason on this computer, um, it's not uh, showing um, the there's a uh, Icons there that tell you what the tool is, but if you um, if you hover over it, it tells you what the tool is. And so they've been. Uh, it's so far. It seems to me that this has been. They've been attending to things like, you know, is it um, uh, ADA 508 compliant? I haven't seen their full VPAT yet. I'm sure that's um, either out there or in the works, but. Um, the fact that you can hover over um, icons is a really, uh, really good start. So if I go into a document, um, I can uh, highlight a part, and then I can I click on annotate so I can highlight it. Um, I can go back to the highlight and um, let's see, gradually the screen. Are you able to zoom in? It's really hard. Oh, okay, okay. Hold on a second here. Let me see. Um, so, how's that? It's a little better. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna keep expanding it until I see people in the back stop squinting. So, there you go. All right. Okay. So if I highlight um, uh, a section. And I click on annotate. Um, it will allow me to um, add a note. Um, so this is my note on the first section. Um, then I can um, standard um, formatting. I can insert uh, links, uh, insert images. Um, and I can insert mathematical uh, notation, so LaTeX is supported. Uh, and then um, I can also add uh, tags. Um, and uh, from here, um, I can also say who's going to read this. Is it public or only me? And then if I had any more groups available, um, those, those would also uh, show up. Let's see, then I can, uh, I've got a search, uh, sort by location, um, share the annotations on this page with someone, and um, that gives me a link that I can send to anybody and they can come and take a look at it. And the link is also um, allows them to uh, annotate as well. Um, and then I've got a help. And then there's uh, my account settings, which are just email address and password. Okay. So I have a question. Yeah. So who is the person who said they use the same canvas? Do you use the same canvas? Okay. So when you use the same canvas, does it look just like this? But you're doing it through the canvas? Can you attach it to a great other side of it? Is it? Because I haven't used any canvas. Do you want me to? I've got mine up, so I don't know if you want to show it. Sure. So 
easier than telling you. Yeah. So do you want to attach it? Um, so that, yeah, okay. let's see if... Uh, Oh, you know, I think because they're recording it. Um, it doesn't. It can't. Yeah, it. I don't think that. Um, Would you mind if I logged into my Canvas again? Not, not at all. Okay. We can do it that way. Oh, there we go. And you know, running in Canvas is it an LTI tool? It's it's an LMS tool. I don't know if it's LTI. I, I'm not familiar with them. Um, that. But uh, it, it works really well with SpeedGrader. They had to do a, a quick fix that makes it a little confusing for students because it says that they've posted even when they haven't. But um, the, speed grade, the speed grader works really well. I'm just trying to uh, let's see. Yeah, I think because they integrated it with the rate of oh, yeah. Taking screenshots of this for the next presentation. Yeah. Uh, you're recording it, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the declaration is up, and so I linked to a website for this one. Okay. And uh, what I wanted them to do, I just like this one because it was, you can find it in in Spanish. So what happens is you get, um, there's my comments. Uh, student questions. Um, I wanted them to look for the values that were Amer what what are typical American values, and so what they needed to do was to go. And so what I can do is um, click on this, and it just goes to exactly where he was asking a question, and so you've got that. And can other students then respond to the question? Other students can respond. I can respond. Okay. And then that goes right to speed grader. If it's uh, done as an assignment. You can make it an assignment, okay. So uh, you can just put it up and it can be an ungraded mm -hmm. document or you can, and th that's where it's the LTI, yeah. So you can go in and um, let's see, where's, so the, the one that's the assignment is, so this is where we practiced. And then we went into, um, So I had, here's the assignment. And um, there's a space there when you're designing the, the assignment where you can then put it in that it's, um, I don't know if that's. Um, it, that looks like a page rather than an assignment. Yeah. yeah it's a page. So, go to the assignments. So what you do is you find the external tool, mm -hmm. and then one of the external tools is Hypothesis, and then you just type in um, you look and find, and Hypothesis comes up, and then you tell it whether it's PDF that you've already uh, created or website, okay. and then it automatically transforms it into um, an assignment that gets graded. Okay. I'm going to try to talk my school in the end. Well, I, I, <laughs> so
See, and that's why the two, there are two of us who are doing it, one in history, one in political science, to see if that works, because it was too late to actually start the, the pilot project. And then next quarter, we're starting with a, as a pilot project. So if you want to join us in the pilot project so that we can go beyond the, the social sciences and humanities division, um, and it, so that we can see if it's worthwhile, because the pilot project itself is, is less expensive. Um, and they come in with all sorts of resources as well to help you out. So we're, we're to set up the, the, the conferences and, and the presentations, bring people in, and if there is enough interest, um, then it makes more sense for e-learning to, to spend their money on adding this to Canvas. But I have found that my students have moved from asking questions on the discussion boards to asking questions directly on the, the, um, the hypothesis assignments because they can highlight it right there and say, this is what I want to use. Right. Or this is, this is what I have, I'm curious about, uh, this is what I don't understand. And what I've been trying to do is to get them to recognize and be willing to ask questions about what they don't understand. That's actually one of the most valuable tools I find for our students, is that they don't like to admit that they don't understand something. They, they don't even really recognize. They just automatically gloss over. Their eyes pass over anything that they don't understand. And so by doing these kind of annotation exercises, I reinforce that not only is it OK for them not to understand, because as academics, that means, oh, I have a research topic. But that there are a lot of these topics that, for me, I, d I still don't understand. So I can highlight, this is something that I don't still don't understand. This is why we're looking at it in these multiple ways. Um, and I'm still exploring it. What I'd like to do is to figure out ways of uh, connecting one hypothesis document with another so that they can see that here are the connections between the assignments that they're given, the readings that they're given. But as I said, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm just starting with this. Right. Well, I want to start. <laughs> and yes, you can. Somebody asked about whether you can use GIFs like you can with Genius. And you can. You can use GIFs. You can use all sorts of things. So. Right, thank you so much for sharing your class with us. Mm -hmm. How well does it scale? I mean, what's it like? Is it great for one or fewer or 200 or fewer? I haven't see I haven't used the uh, Canvas plugin yet, so I'm very grateful for you, for your presence. And that's also shows you the value of finding out who's in the room, so we can talk to each other, right? Um, so what about uh, what about grading? How do you um, uh, the question is it does it scale? How many uh, uh, do you have an assessment tool that you use and a rubric for uh, annotation? I have, I have a rubric, and the lovely thing about this is, like in discussions, only the students' annotations come up in SpeedGrader. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to scroll through everybody's. Okay. You, you can, just like you can just the discussion board, go back to the entire discussion, mm -hmm. but it initially just shows up with that one student's material. Okay, great. Right now, I have a large class, and so I'm doing with the students as far as the annotations. Because I was really concerned about, you know, whoever, you know, I was really concerned about people just forcing, but somebody's already annotated that part and asked why we want it. So to prevent that and to allow everyone to have an opportunity to complete the assignment, I used to actually just put the class in the group, so it was a five. And every group of five would be annotation, and then I sort of curate it and sort of then put it all together for them and give it to the class. Well, I imagine that just as with the discussion boards, if you put students into groups, then you can grade them individually in the group. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried that. I, well, I, I tried it with the algorithm and first and realized very quickly I had a problem and I needed to go back and grade them up. So. Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm not running. Um, okay, I think we're, yeah, we're good till for a few more minutes here. Um, yeah, thank you so much for um, the information on the plugin. Uh, that was that came as a kind of a surprise that they were um, able to uh, roll that out um, as quickly as they did. Uh, let's see. Um, I one of the one of the things about uh, that I like about hypothesis is um, is that you can. Um, decide whether your notes are going to be for yourself, for a particular group, 
a department or the general public. You have the ability to create groups, you know, I think, is important. And it's hard to manage that, not impossible, uh, using other tools. Um, the, uh, there's a lot of examples out there um, that, uh, that you might want to take a look at um, where uh, we have uh, people who are annotating poetry. Um, there's also a, um, the open anthology of er early American literature uh, is a great project because it's not just, um, so it's, it's, an, it's an open education resource and, um, and then it's also utilizing um, uh, the annotate, you know, it's also u utilizing um, hypothesis. Uh, and then um, the uh, American Yacht is another uh, literature textbook. Um, and then there are similar projects outside of education, um, even like through the Engelbart Institute, um, augmenting the human intellect. That wasn't uh, just teachers in there. That was, uh, there was, um, uh, people have been interested in that work because of its, uh, the social significance and the vision, uh, as well as the technology. Um, and uh, what um, uh, I'd like to do is to uh, bring you back to um, the article, uh, Engagement Matters. Um, but we can um, discuss this a little bit about, um, about uh, the challenges of this, um, and I think uh, it, I'm sorry. Your uh, your name again? Miriam. Miriam. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Miriam. Um, you, you said uh, joining two documents was was one of your challenges in, in annotation assignment. Well, I yeah. have to, it's something an idea. I just don't know if it's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Um, let's see. I've. Um, don't, not in a computer lab for this, so um, we can um, look at um, what I'd like you to do uh, in the time that we have remaining, uh, which is about uh, 10 minutes, is um, if you, uh, so you've heard one another talk about this, you've um, listened to me long enough, uh, well, I, th I think this would be a great opportunity to... Uh, Maybe if I can get you guys to turn your chairs around and we can uh, reimagine this space. Um, break up into groups of three and uh, let's think about uh, some ideas for annotation assignments in your discipline or in your work, right, that you might, uh, that you might find useful. And I'd like to gather some of those ideas uh, from you. Um, and uh, then uh, I'll, I'm going to put these notes in. Um, uh, if I have, let's see, I have a um, uh, shared Google Doc, which is Hypothesis Workshop. Yep, there we go. Okay. I'll put some of those um, these ideas in a, a document in this presentation. Uh, I'm pretty sure the conference will send this presentation out, and then it will also be up on my website, which is uh, jeffkane.com, G-E-O-F-F-C-A-I-N. Um, but let's go ahead and do that. And we got, I think it looks like we've got, we can do this pretty neatly. And uh, there's three people here. Um, maybe if you want to move back, turn your chair around, we've got, um, uh, if the four of you could, would like to um, talk together, and um, we will uh, take a few minutes to do that.
Unfortunately, we're, uh, we're running out of time, um, but one of the things that um, I, the most important part of these conferences of any kind is the connections that you make with people. So, um, but what I'd like to do is a really good, quick report out, um, and your name again was? Molly. Molly, okay. Um, Molly, uh, what... Did your uh, group come up with some assignments or that uh, you were thinking of? Mostly we were just chatting about some of the things we wanted to do with um, something like hypothesis. Um, she mentioned she wanted to create you know, a rubric for annotation. Um, so we were talking about that. Um, we talked about peer review quite a bit about the um, so I had some questions about how they were doing the career. And so we talked about career activities and annotations. Awesome. Great. Thank you. And then what about this group here? 
Okay. Well, really great. yeah, I just share the hypothesis 